Hey, this is Eric. I'm going to talk about random geoprocessing tools within QGIS that you might find useful someday. Uh, geoprocessing tools are usually, uh, they usually include two vector layers that you overlay in some way to create a new layer. Um, we already saw one of those, at least if you watched my earlier video on clipping, um, and buffering is also a geoprocessing geo tool. Today I want to talk about intersect and union, so you get a feel for what those do, and then the rest kind of follow in a similar way. So, for these, pretty much, you always want two layers that have polygons on them, in them, rather. In my case, I'm going to look at city council districts and school districts. They don't overlap very much at all in New York City. Before I move on, I want to make sure that I'm in the right projection, or rather that both of my files are in the right projection. You can see when I turned off on the fly projection that both of the files are still there. Uh, that is a good sign. That indicates that they're in the same projection. You see that there are some weird geometry differences. The uh, school districts, for some reason, uh, carve up through here. It looks like a water feature, but I, um, I don't know that part of the Bronx too well. It's not well enough to say. Anyway... The other way to make sure that they're in the same projection is to look at the CRS. In this case, <clears throat> I'm actually not sure whose fault this is, but they're in... Um, they're both in 2263, but it doesn't say 2263. Uh, it says it's user-defined, um, but it is equivalent to 2263. We could change it here to be explicit about it by clicking specify and then picking it. It's not going to make a difference though. Okay? So even if I apply this, it's not going to change anything. Um, okay? So they're both in the same projection. That's what we need. And now I can jump right into it, go up to vector, geoprocessing tools, and let's start with intersect. Intersect as it sounds, is going to, um, it's only going to keep the parts where both layers overlap. So where the features overlap, it keeps those, gets rid of everything else. It's kind of like a clip that happens on both sides. Um, so the input layer and the intersect layer, they're not going to matter too much, which, which is which here. Um, Usually the first layer is like your main layer where you want um, any new data to go. Um, the intersect layer is, or is the second layer in these geoprocessing menus. It's kind of like the, the extra one, the one that's helping perform this um, that's helping perform this operation. Okay. Um, you could do it with only the selected features. I'm going to do it with the whole layer, though. And I'm going to browse and name it something really useful, like NYCC Intersect NYSD. Um, yeah, and when I do this, I'm replacing it. I already did this earlier, so I'm just overwriting these things. And I'm going to add the result to Canvas. It takes a variable amount of time. If you had a lot more data, it would take a lot longer. It has to go through every feature in both files and see what the differences and similarities are between. Okay, so that's done. You can tell it's done because you see it in the layers over here. One thing that kind of annoys me about the geoprocessing tools is it doesn't show you here. Uh, that it's done. It looks like it's just starting, but actually it's waiting for you to do it again, uh, which isn't 
isn't usually what I feel like I need to do. Anyway, that's beside the point. So I'm going to move the intersect layer up here, and you see that it is much more complicated than the other two. Um, if I turn off the intersect, you see the school districts, you can see the city council districts. Um, right, so these convoluted looking boundaries are actually where the they're all of the boundaries of both the school districts and the city council districts. Um, so if I select one of the intersected features, like this one, I can dig down and say, oh, it's part of that school district. And I can dig down a little bit more and uh, compare. It's part of that city council district. So every, every distinct part that is created when you overlap these two things becomes a new feature in the intersected layer. And if I open up the attribute table, you see that on the left, I get the city council districts, and on the right, I have the school districts. Um, often the length and area at this point are useless, but um, that's what you get when you do an intersect, and you can remove those if you want later. Okay, sorry about that. I had to, um, sorry that this probably looks pretty different from what it was before. I had to stop and start over. So, um, here I am. This is the, we just finished doing intersection, and I wanted to do union really quickly so you could see what that does. It's pretty, it's pretty significantly different from what you see with intersect. And I'll go over um, really quickly um, why that is. So you do basically the same thing. You go up to Vector Geoprocessing Tools, go to Union, and then you pick your input layer and your union layer. Again, it's not going to matter too much here, so I'm just making sure that one is one and one is the other. I'm going to browse, and I'm going to overwrite one that I used earlier, um, yes, replace it, and I'm adding the result to Canvas. So Union, unlike Intersect, is going to give you all of the geometries, so you're going to see everything, everything covered up here. So even the, the red and green areas, the, um, the city council districts and the school districts, everything's going to be covered up, but you're going to get a lot of features when you do this, and some of the features are going to have school district data, some of them are going to have city council data, some of them are going to be combined um, and have both. So usually you'll want to use union if you're mostly interested in coverage generally. Um, <clears throat> so if you had, say, multiple types of land cover, and you just want to make sure that everything was covered up, you might union them all together. Um, so let's look at that. That's finished now. Um, at, so as I said, everything gets covered up. So even down here, especially in um, Jamaica Bay, where you see that the intersect is purple, the school districts are green, and the council's districts are like a reddish, um, you see that the union covers all of them up, but it also has the same texture as the intersect and each individual one. So why don't we zoom in here a bit and get a feeling for what's going on here. I'm going to use the, the um, Identify Features tool up here, and that's going to bring up the information about each feature over here. So we see um, where it intersects. It's 42 and 18, so it has both the council district and the school district. This is one area that, um, why can't I click on it? Okay. Oh, because I'm on the wrong layer. 
Okay, let's do that again then. I was on the wrong one. Okay, so when I click on it now, I get something different. Okay, so I get the city council district data down here in the bottom left. If I click on this feature, I get the school district. Um, yeah. So this can be a little weird because you have overlapping features if you if you look at this. Um, so you see this this feature, which is a multi-polygon. It's a bunch of islands. And then if I click over here, we get this chunk of the um, of the polygons. And if you're having a hard time seeing the overlap, such as in these areas over here, what you can do, let me reposition it so we can better see it. What you can do is edit the layer and move the features around so you can actually see them. Um, I'm not aware of a better way to look at all of the features besides digging through the attribute table. So if you go into edit mode and the move features button, you can actually just click and drag. So there's one. You see that it was overlapping this one, which is mostly the same, but that intersected part at the top was taken off. There's another one under here, which is way bigger. And another one. And this one has these nasty edges. Um, and these edges are, sorry, I'm having a hard time grabbing that one now. Um, if you look here, they are the edges of these features. So my, my interpretation of that is that the school districts and city council districts, even though they looked very similar and they were very similar, they weren't perfectly the same. So you got these little, um, got these little slivers that um, that didn't match. So we got those were included in features, and I think that's the last one. Yeah. So so you see that we got five different, five or six different features here um, for roughly the same area. And if we query these, some of them are going to have both. Um, city council district and school district data. Some of them just have the school district. So that one has the city council district. Um, that one has both. So that's actually the intersection of the two. But you get all of them. Um, and they're all overlapping when you do unions. Um, I can actually undo this and it will undo all of my movement. I'm so yeah, that's that's union, that's another type of geoprocessing that you should be aware of. And um maybe you'll find it useful in in your projects or in general. And um that's all I'm going to talk about for geoprocessing. Hope it was helpful.